Hi there, and welcome back to the latest Valencia Property Podcast. We've reached April after the Fias Fiestas in Valencia, and when I recorded this, we were in Easter week, where once more lots of people take lots of time off work. I'm actually recording this while away for a few days, but we'll be back up and running next week, and a whole team will also be back from their sojourns around Spain and Europe, and possibly other places. Speaking of the team, this month we're talking to Jess about working with Valencia Property, and we have a word with Kath, who runs Stepping Stone Rentals with me. We also take a look at the posts that you may have missed in the last couple of months after missing this out of last month's podcast, and our Valencia story for this month is why Valencia has the biggest garden in Spain. Now before we start, I'd just like to apologise for the voice, it's a bit uh, gruff today because I've got a bad cold, Um, but anyway, we'll start with why Valencia has the biggest garden in Spain. The old riverbed in Valencia makes up the biggest garden in Spain. Starting at the new Parque de Cabecera near the stunning Biopark Zoo and stretching down past the City of Arts and Sciences for a full 9 kilometers, the Antiguo Cauce del Turia, the old Turia riverbed, makes up the biggest and longest garden in Spain. However, everyone who comes to Valencia looking for a property always asks the same two questions. Why is it here and where's the river then? The fact is, the history of the biggest garden in Spain dates back to the Gran Riada of 1957. Now, a riada is a flood. As I've told many people over the years, when it rains in Valencia, it absolutely pours. Think monsoon-type rains. Rains that make you think there could be no more water left in the sky, and you get the idea. And all of that rain is generally concentrated into a few days in October, or maybe late September, and it's when the summer breaks. It's called the Gota Fria. The Valencians fear the Gota Fria a lot. And it all comes down to a collective memory imprinted into the psyche of even people who weren't around in 1957, due to the images that can be found at various points around the city, and online of course. The city centre is four kilometres away from the sea as the crow flies, due to the fact that the medieval city grew up inside the walled area that started at the Torres Serranos, the old gates to the city. Marco Polo sailed up the Turia regularly to trade in La Lonca, the old silk market. In the first ever really badly thought out job creation scheme in the 18th century, the city elders decided it would be a great idea to knock down the walls that lined the riverbed, leaving just the Torres Serranos and the Torres Cuar. There have been various floods over the years, but the Gran Riada of 1957, following closely on the heels of another 1950s flood, was the last straw. The River Turia has therefore played a key part in the development of Valencia over the centuries, and never more so than post-1957. There are various theories about what makes a gota fria, but that doesn't matter here. The truth is that a simple weather phenomena can dictate the development of a city. The fateful day was the 14th of October 1957. However, the major rains fell some way away on the 13th, of course. The gota fria affected areas feeding the river Turia upstream, and there was up to 30 centimetres of rain that fell in a 24-hour period. I'll just repeat that, 30 centimetres, a foot of rain. Another 10 centimetres fell on the 14th, but the majority of the water was heading down to Valencia. And on the 14th of October, the water hit. It went over the top of the walls of where the river was, and it headed into the city. This was such a disaster that the city decided never again, and so the local government put together a plan called the Plan Sur to divert the riverbed around the south of the city. The mayor of Valencia even defied Franco in order to get some action to help the city, where in certain places the water got to a depth of 5 metres above street level. You have to remember that Valencia is essentially flat, and despite this, the area around the cathedral remained water-free, whereas Calle Pintoseroya, for example, was underwater to a depth of 2.7 metres. When you walk from one to the other, it actually seems totally flat. The Plan Sur had one big idea. Make sure it couldn't happen again by taking the water around the south of the city and make sure that the new riverbed was wide enough and deep enough to take the water from a once in a 200 year storm. The work started in 1958 with the plan, but it was only in 1973 when the waters of the Turia actually stopped flowing through Valencia, despite Franco having opened the southern route in 1969. Part of the financing came from the people of Valencia, as every letter and parcel that they sent during the whole of the construction period had an extra 0.25 0.25 parts of one peseta added. It doesn't seem much, but when everyone's sending letters all the time, this is obviously before the internet and things, well, you got a lot of money coming in that way. However, the question remained, what could be done with the riverbed that would be drained? 
The idea of a park wasn't the city father's main idea, but a popular resistance movement grew up through the 70s with the slogan, the river is ours and we want it green. The popular movement eventually prevailed, and as a result, the town council relented on their original ideas of putting together an urban motorway. It was a good job that Spain was still essentially underdeveloped, and the number of cars on the road were a lot less than most other advanced countries, thanks to more than 30 years of intransigence and lack of development under Franco. Instead, they started talking with architects for ideas for gardens and design. Ricardo Bofil, Santiago Calatrava and many others have been involved over the years in the design of the space, and it's only now where we can see the final results. And I'll say almost. Winding its way round the old town, the riverbed is a stunning example of what can happen when a city gets its ideas in place and decides to innovate rather than take the easy route. Cyclists, joggers and walkers move easily through the city using the riverbed without having to use the heavily trafficked roads in the centre of Valencia. And all sorts of sports, ranging from the obvious, football, basketball and athletics, to the more esoteric and unusual, such as Tai Chi, baseball, rugby and even cricket, take advantage of the open spaces in the riverbed. The most spectacular and overpriced millennium project in the world, the City of Arts and Sciences, dominates the end of the riverbed towards the beach, and the starting end is dominated by the new Parque de Cabecera. So by an accident of meteorology, a popular movement rallying against authority and the foresight of a few politicians and architects, not to mention the recently added ingredient of corruption and excess by the current crop of inept idiots that call themselves politicians who gave us the Agora and the Saddam Hussein-style bridge that stands next to it, the Assault Door, the Turia Riverbed became what it is today, the green lung that makes Valencia stand out from the rest of Europe and a brilliant example of urban design that should be studied and copied by other cities around the world. And that's it. That's all you need to know about the riverbed. If you've got any questions, feel free to hit me up in any social media. On to our short interviews then. First, we had a chat with Catherine about the inquiries coming through to Stepping Stone Rentals and what we're learning from the people looking for a medium-term rental. Okay, so we're now sat down with Catherine and we're talking about the inquiries coming through to Stepping Stone Rentals and what we're learning from the people who are looking for a medium-term rental. Not the owners in this case, the people who are coming. So have we got a typical profile of client or are there various profiles that are common? Oh, we have a, uh, well, actually, we're going to say we have a, a variety of profiles. Uh, the ones that end up renting is a specific client, but uh, we're seeing families, small family and and couples. And then we've been getting quite a lot of uh, retirees or, or those that are looking into retiring um, and, and looking for a new place to live. Uh-huh. So they're coming over here. And they're looking for their long-term place, or they're looking to buy, or something like that. And this is the first step. Look, the idea of a company, yeah? Um, so, again, why do people look at a medium-term rental rather than going straight for a long-term rental? Uh, basically, there's there's a few reasons to that. Uh, one of them is is just the flexibility with the medium-term, uh, mid-term rentals. Is they don't know Valencia, they don't know the neighborhoods where they want to be, and... Uh, to lock themselves into a 12-month contract which you cannot break before six months. Yeah, without knowing the area. Yeah. Without knowing the area and without wanting to lose months of deposit, um, it's just safer to go into a midterm. Mm-hmm. Well, also pe- people are getting us for 12 months up front, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Between six and 12 months up front Ouch. of deposit. Yeah. And it's not even, well... I want to say it's, it's, I think it's not even allowed. It's, it's, it's not, it's, 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 by law, it's two months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it could be a bit more, but I think by law, it's two months. So, uh, so it's the way the market is. Are there any commonalities in what people are looking for? Yes. Um, not too small. <laughs> so we're definitely, because of, because of the family size, we're getting a lot of three bedroom requests. Mm-hmm. Um, they either want two bedrooms because family is going to be there or come and visit mm-hmm. and an office space, a workspace. So they don't want to be sitting in the living room working. So we are getting a lot of requests for three bedrooms. Um, less likely, but people ask for two bathrooms yeah. and that's a really tricky one to find. So it's, yeah, there are many. <laughs> it's not part of the Spanish uh, terrain to have two bathrooms. No, it's more normal just to knock on the door and say, can you get out of there, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hurry up, I gotta go. Yeah. My turn. Um, so, yeah, it's three three bedrooms, two bathrooms is, is the common request. Okay. So are people looking to stay here long term or are they just passing through like a digital nomad or what? 
No, no. Uh, we're getting a lot of people that are looking to settle. They're, they, uh, We've even had some people that have said they're not, they've are not. they never been to Valencia per se, but they've heard of really good things and said they're coming and they want to stay for a year mm-hmm. to to get a grasp on the city. Um, and then with the intention of fine. Yeah. And and be staying put. <laughs> okay. What's the greatest demand then? Greatest demand? Um, I've been seeing quite a lot of demand for center of Valencia. Uh, we've been in the, it, Cabanyal has been growing. There's been a lot of demand for, for being close to the water uh, and cl- well, close to the park, the, the Turia Gardens. Yeah. Um, so, so that actually covers quite a lot of areas because of yeah. the way the Turia Gardens goes around the city and exactly. such. Yeah. yeah. So if, 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 if uh, the, the, yeah, everyone is going mainly for what's close proximity to parks, mm-hmm. beach, uh, and public transport. Yeah, because when we started this, we thought there'd be a bit more demand for outside the city as well, and that yeah. hasn't seemed to arise that much. Not as much. People just want the city to city, here. Yeah, because they're looking for, for the, what, the the lifestyle that the city brings. It's, yeah. it's the coffee shops and the buzz and the movement and shopping. I reckon they can still get it. They just need to get used to getting on the metro to get into the town. Exactly. Yeah. It, 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 easily. I mean, we have some apartments available that are outside of Valencia, but, you know, just a few steps away from public transport. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to pop out the door onto the onto the metro and you're in the city and you have that, that buzz. But because a lot of people coming here don't know Valencia and don't know... Yeah, and don't know the villages and the towns around yeah. as well. Yeah, so the demand is a bit less for outside, but... Mm-hmm. Okay, so at the moment on the website, we haven't got any uh, reviews because we've not put them onto the website, but we have had feedback. So yeah. what's the reaction been from those who've already stayed at a Stepping Stone property? Yeah, it's been uh, very positive. Um, uh, everyone so far, I haven't had any negative uh, feedback, let's say, so that's, that's, that's good. the first positive part. But then what we have heard is just how easy it's been uh, to to find have a home to have a place to go into and and that there was no surprises there was no skeletons in the closet it was just here's our here's our home and i, th- I think also because of the choice of the properties we we've only had a couple of problems like a couple of chairs that were a bit wobbly and the tabletop and things <laughs> top uh, and an ele- electric that kept going off because they didn't realize yeah. that they needed so much but apart yeah. from that yeah, and that was sorted very quickly. Yeah? Well, that's the thing. So on top of that, um, we've been really on top of any issue that has arise, and so it, it's been sorted. It uh, our tabletop is now stable. Yeah. Electricity doesn't get uh, yeah. isn't cutting off. Just to say that was all one place, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all the same place. <laughs> one place that was quite it was quite um, <laughs> it was quite a project, but we got it all taken care of, um, and yeah, now it's sorted. Yeah, I mean, the owner is talking about coming back uh, in a few months to to stay and enjoy. Yeah, I was I was a uh, I was on Facebook the other day and somebody had asked about a stepping stone rentals any good and somebody just said yeah we're staying with them now and like we were met at the place you know the place, everything was perfect the price was great there were no surprises you know that they, they were just really happy with it. The, the only surprise which will now not no longer be a surprise because I'm going to mention it, it on the positive end is that we leave um, like a, a goodie bag. Uh, groceries for yeah. those coming in. If 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 uh, so, they've got other, some basics. There's some exactly some basics, especially if they yeah. communicate that they're going to be coming in at like twelve at night. Yeah, or, or four in the morning. Late, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If you have really late or early uh, arrival points, then we like to leave you know basics in the kitchen so that way you're not scrambling out the door. And, and sometimes because when they get here, Spain has a lot of holidays. And it might be they arrive for first day. The next day, everything's closed. Yeah. So yeah. you can't yeah, get the basic. A few times yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had. Uh, I have pointed out that where a grocery store will be open that is uh, 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 open during the holidays, and then just to ease, just to make it easy, have left stuff in the fridge so that way there's no searching. Thanks, Catherine. If you see yourself reflected in the types of people looking to get a stepping stone rental to start their Valencia property journey, then contact us, and Kath will be happy to guide you through the process. Then we talked to Jess about working in Valencia property. Okay, so we're with Jess today. Jess, hi there. Hello. Tell us about your ideal client, Jess. Um, my ideal client is somebody who knows what they want. Um, I mean, an ideal client is somebody who you've prepared for coming to Spain and finding their property. Um, it's not their fault if they're not prepared, it's our fault. So an ideal client is somebody who 
I have already prepared by having one or two video calls with them before they get here. They know what they're letting themselves in for. I've already explained to them um, what the bad bits are about buying uh-huh. and uh, they're accepting of that and trusting that um, we know what we're talking about. Okay, what's the worst thing they can do? Um, not know what they want, change their mind and not trust us um, and send thousands of articles that they've dug up from um, millions of years of uh, internet trawling about uh, contradicting what our many years of working in the industry is telling them about. And, and worst of all, thinking that Facebook is their friend. Yay. <laughs> Where's your favourite district of Valencia? Well, I'm, um, I've spent over 20 years in Rusafa. So you're not going to get me to say anything bad about that, even though it has changed a lot over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, I am very, very pleasantly surprised about what's happening in Montolivetti. Uh, 20 years ago, um, it was pretty grim. And I went to deepest, darkest Montolivetti, which I didn't think would have changed that much the other day. And um, it's all leafy cafe society, beautiful, happy, close to town, close to the river. Yep. These are prices. Exactly, yeah. Okay, well, so which town in the suburbs would you choose to live in? Because uh, obviously we know you're living with Fafa, so, but if you had to choose, which one? I would probably go with everybody else and say Liliana, but if I was to live in a town, not necessarily in the suburbs, am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Then I would not go for something similar to the city. I would go for Serra, which is um, rural. Um, so it would be something completely different to the centre. Or I would go to Denia, where I'd be very happy to live on the beach all year round. Okay, right. You you prefer Denia to Cuyera, then? A bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's the most satisfying sale you've made and why? Um, I'm not dissatisfied with any sales or anything. Uh-huh. Um, eventually, uh, they all uh, have happy buyers. Um it might take some time. It might take some time, yes. Uh, but it's um, like probably the happiest moment. So when um, clients listen to us, um, very, very happy experience of a couple who came from the United States a couple of years ago. Um, they wanted a three-bedroom um, house in, um, in, the, in a safe sort of an outlying area in Valencia, like uh, now Campanar. Um, so I introduced them to Montolivetti. Introduced them to a very tiny uh, little apartment. Um, and being Americans, that was not even on the, something that they would have even considered. Um, they bought this tiny, tiny one and a half bedroom place um, in an area which they wouldn't have considered. And they are the happiest buyers ever. And they've seen um, over the past two years how Montolivetti is getting less grubby. Um, they're thrilled with uh, the neighborhood, the closeness to town. And they've realized that they do not need the meters that they initially thought being Americans. Okay. What's your number one tip for buying in Valencia? Listen to us. Yeah, fill in the follow so. answer. <laughs> <laughs> and do you enjoy what you do? I absolutely love it. Hand on heart. How long have you been doing it? Um, I've been working in the industry, um, but on the rental side for about 20 years. Mm-hmm. And I've been working at Valencia Property for eight years, I think. Yeah, so remember. So remember. It's a long time. Yep. yep. Thanks, Jess. And yet again, we have different areas to think about. Our latest posts, well, what we posted that you may be interested in since the beginning of January, it answers quite a lot, but we're just going to mention two here. Firstly, we updated our first step to buying property in Valencia post, which is one of our most important posts ever. We updated it because it wasn't that the original post was out of date or anything, but we just wanted to make sure that everyone got to know that not only is the original post still relevant, but it's even more relevant now and that we require prior booking in order to be able to work with us at Valencia Property. So what's changed? 
Well, nothing really major. We have pointed out a few things you should think about, including issues with location and things to look out for if you're buying for yourself or for an investment purposes. But in general, this post is useful for one main reason from your side, and a huge reason from our side. In order to work together, you need to be clear about what you want, and our form helps you communicate those requirements to us clearly. From our point of view, it helps us have a written record of what a client wants so we can narrow the search down to a great selection of properties. If you tell us that you want an apartment or a house in any price, in any area, with any number of bedrooms and bathrooms, then anything will suit you, right? Actually, that's wrong. Nothing will suit you because you haven't got a clue about what you want. If you have communicated clearly what you are looking for, then you have taken a clear first step towards getting what you want, and it allows us to communicate back to you knowing whether what you want is going to be possible, easy, or really difficult. It allows us to manage expectations. After we publish the new article in which we stress that you need some must-haves, but it's better to have a greater number of would-likes, our first form came back with 32 must-haves. I can guarantee you know that the particular property asked for by those must-haves does not exist. Not in Valencia, not outside Valencia, not in Spain, not in Europe, and not in the world, and probably not in the universe unless we're going to go down the route of believing in an infinite number of universes with very slight differences between each one. And just in case it wasn't hard enough to find a house with 32 must-haves, there were also 19 deal-breakers in there too. I sent this out to the team, and Jess is going to do her best to satisfy the client. We reckon we have a place that has about 20 of the 32 must-haves. So there are 12 it hasn't got. So if you'll give me the chance to answer one of the questions I posed to our team above, what's your number one tip for buying in Valencia? It's don't have 32 must-haves in your property requirements. Your brain needs to have a little more plasticity and then maybe we can find the ideal place. If you want to send us your requirements, then go along to the article, you'll find it in the show notes, and we can start working together on your Valencia search once you send us your form. The other article we want to mention is also important because it's getting more and more difficult to find. What's getting more difficult to find? Well, property. What's the situation? So two years ago, there were over 11,000 properties for sale in Valencia on Idealista, the major property portal in Spain. A couple of weeks ago, we were touching 4,500. And then, of course, there aren't really 4,500. We're finding more and more that when we contact the agent, then the conversation goes like this. Uh, it's sold. Have you got anything else? No, but we have to leave it online, as otherwise we're paying Idealista a lot of money for no ads. Weird, right? Why would you advertise something you haven't got? So after this happened in about 50% of the cases a few weeks ago with agents, developers and private sellers, we decided that really, there are only around 50% of those 4,500 properties for sale, and of course, then there's the issue of repeat listings. Most properties are not exclusive to an agent, and you see repeated various times on Idealista, sometimes at different prices. What else do you need to know? Well, lots of agents are leaving Idealista, as Idealista has just put up their prices. They're getting to be a monopoly, and therefore they're allowing themselves to start putting up the price. For agents with just a few properties, then, they are getting off the platform. This, of course, means that there are even fewer properties advertised on Idealista, but there may be actually more properties for sale. You just won't see them. And this is where your buyer's agent comes in, which is what we do. We know those agents. We know what properties are available, and we have a good relationship with the agents in the local area who are members of the ASIC Val, the Local Estate Agents Association. They generally let us know when they have something available that may suit our clients because they have made previous sales with us. We've written before about how to work with Valencia Property as your buyer's agent, and it's becoming very important to make your appointments well before coming over to Valencia and to let us know exactly what you are looking for. You can see the link in the show notes, of course. However, don't be surprised if what you are looking for doesn't exist. In the last few weeks, we've had clients with 750,000 and 600,000 going home empty-handed because what they want just isn't available at the moment, even if they up their price point. And they could do that. We told them to be patient. Equally, we've had a client who bought last year and modernised using our services who keeps telling us that every day they are sure they got the right place for them because they haven't seen anything better come onto the market since they bought and we found a hidden gem for them. It's true, we do. Another thing to bear in mind is that we are blunt to the point of rudeness. If you come to us with a budget of 150 k and we tell you that you won't get what you want in Valencia for that price, because you won't, then telling us, well, we've seen various places on Idealista that will suit us, 
doesn't mean we don't know what we're talking about. It means one or more of the following. It's VPO and you can't buy it. And we've written about VPO on the blog. You can find it in the show notes. It's a bank property in a bad building and you can't buy it. And we've written about why we don't work with banks in the blog and you can find it in the show notes. It's in a place you'd not necessarily want to be. Well, there's a few buildings in Valencia. There's never there's never a whole area you wouldn't want to be in, but there's a few buildings. And if you find something at that price point, it's usually in one of those buildings. And finally, it has special considerations, meaning either it's got ocupas, um, squatters, or it has structural issues such as aluminosis, which means the concrete is um, sort of fading away. Now, I'm not saying 100% that there is nothing for sale under 150000 in Valencia that's decent now, but it's close. You'll need to have a budget of at least 200000 in the city now, and in many areas you'll need 250000 to 300000 to even have a choice. It is what it is. Luckily, most of our clients come from places where they've just sold at a high price as well, so when they come here they find that these prices are really accessible. That's like, that's it from today from the Valencia Property Podcast. My voice just about held out. Um, I've taken out a few coughs. Well, actually, quite a few coughs. And hopefully, by next month, my voice will be back. So until next time, we hope you keep reading the blog. And if you need anything, just get in touch with us. You can find us on information at valencia-property.com. <laughs>